Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we discuss the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Datejust 41, reference 126334, predominantly in stainless steel, but with a fetching and faceted white gold, or I should say gray gold, bezel. It's also the Wimbledon dial, featuring a combination of stylized green transferred Roman numerals, a dark rhodium base, just a few accents of white gold. The watch is 41 millimeters in diameter, and the Datejust 41, launched in 2016, is a versatile watch for Rolex, being capable in almost all sports watch respects, but also dressable in formal watch respects. So the watch is 41 millimeters in diameter, not counting the crown, 11.6 millimeters thick, so it'll fit underneath any cuff, including a tight dress shirt. Lug to lug, it's a reasonable 47.5 millimeters, but it's a substantial 51.1 millimeters if you include the lug to lug solid end link span across the wrist. The spacing between the lugs, if you're crazy enough to accessorize, is 21 millimeters, but I recommend you consider the Rolex factory oyster bracelet to be the first choice. First of all, it's nicely finished. You can see it has the upscale finish that is generally reserved for Rolex's premier pieces, polished center links, large center links with staggered alignment, all of polish, shoulders with a satin finish, outer faces in polish, and of course you can see all removable links are fixed by screws. The clasp is not the clamshell system seen on the harder core sports watches, but the lift lock release system with a internal beak and a hook. It's not a friction fit system. It actually features a vertical trigger release. The clasp fully finished and all of high polish internally. Uh, two ways to adjust this watch. Of course, you can use the easy link system, which is a five millimeter incremental adjustment that requires no tools. It's the equivalent of adding or removing one sizable link. But, and I don't know if you can see this, but there are three anchoring points inside the clasp, and this is rarely mentioned even by Rolex. There are different anchoring points inside the clasp, so you can move the tethering point of the bracelet inside of the clasp for precise sizing, which is to say you have more adjustability than you might think at first glance. Now jump into the dial side of the watch. Let's talk about the case band first. It's slim. It's sexy. It's not the Rolex super case, and it's surprisingly complex. My favorite part is the graceful taper at the end of the lugs. That sharp pointed taper, sort of an inverse ducktail, gives the watch a sort of grace that ties it closely to the Datejust 36, the Date 8s, and the Daytonas, rather than the super case GMT, Explorer 2, Sea Dweller, and Sub. The bezel is everything you'd expect from Rolex white gold, which is to say it's gray gold. It's a homogenous alloy that is white straight through. So if you do scratch it, there's no yellow milky substrate underneath, and it never needs to be plated with any kind of a rhodium topping, as conventional white gold often does. So gray gold, 18 karat white gold that's white straight through. The dial, dark rhodium with a sunburst. You can see the reflective qualities of the sunburst, always highly dynamic, that particular dial style. And the dark rhodium in tandem with a set of stylized transferred lacquer type Roman numerals. You can see that the raised just slightly above the dial is a good deal of transferred material is actually applied to create this Wimbledon dial. And then you have a small amount of luminescence, the index at nine and the hour and the minute hand. The Cyclops eye magnifier wears better on a 41 millimeter watch than it does on a 36 or smaller. So I actually find that the Cyclops is less obtrusive on the larger Rolex watches featuring that particular magnifier design. No printed coronet at the top, but a five-point white gold Rolex coronet crown. Of course, the Wimbledon dial, a favorite from the Datejust 2 days, carried over to the new Datejust 41. Underneath the case back, manufacture movement, Rolex 3235, 31 joules, automatic winding, 70-hour power reserve, 28.8 beat rate, stop seconds or hacking, a quick set date, a full balance bridge, and a free sprung index for shock resistance, and an overcoil hairspring to help the watch earn its chronometer certification with excellent isochronism and precision in any orientation with respect to gravity. That's what a Breguet overcoil hairspring gives you. The watch also features a neobium zirconium blue oxidized hairspring material known as parachrome blue that is very anti-magnetic, so the watch resilient in that respect too. Screw down crown, a Rolex twin lock, 100 meters water resistant. This is a full service sports watch right here. And I should mention it features Rolex's exotic Liga etched Chronergy escapement, plus a reprofiled train and a reprofiled barrel and spring to raise the previous power reserve of 48 hours to 70 plus. This is a watch that packs all the toys, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the review, is equally viable as dress watch and sports watch. 
Every Rolex has the heart of a sports watch. This one just happens to have a bit more elegance on the outside. A sports watch caliber in an upscale suit. See it? Throw it on the wrist, on the watch box. Rolex Datejust 41 Wimbledon dial, chromolite blue by night. 